Welcome to Below the Line, where we talk about working in Hollywood from the crew perspective. My name is Skid. I'm a former assistant director and your host. It's a new season of Below the Line, and today I'm speaking with a couple of guests who are in the business of supporting Below the Line talent. First, Marilyn Wintel, your publicist and the founder of Storyline Public Relations. Nice to see you. Hi, thanks for having us. Next, Craig Mizrahi, you've been an agent with Innovative Artists since 2005. Welcome to Below the Line. Thank you so much, Skid. So guys, let's jump right into it. Why do Below the Line talent need representation? Well, the answer, I think, is why not? Uh, Actors and directors and writers have had agents for decades, and they're freelance, and so are people behind the camera. Uh, A few decades ago, there, uh, there began below the line folks, specifically DPs, production designers, editors, costume designers, uh, and those folks uh, having agents. As they're freelance, just like actors are, uh, it made sense for them to have a a type of management helping them decide, you know, what's next for their career. When you get into the entertainment industry, it is, um, you know, it's a a tricky terrain, as we all know. So um, navigating through it is a lot easier when you have somebody helping you guide you through. Now, Craig, you said some stuff there about how it's developed, and I want to go back to that. But first, Marilyn, talk to me about the publicist side of it. So on the PR side, it's relatively new. I think composers have had publicists for a very long time. But as far as expanding into costume design and production design, editors, sound designers, that is somewhat new over the past several years. And I think it's important on that side of things to really on the public side of things, highlight the brand of these individuals to show they're not just a costume designer. They have a specific process, um, a specific style, and just getting people to know them more as a person and who they are aside from, oh, just the costume designer, because they have such a big story to tell. And when you have a publicist, I think that gives you the opportunity to have someone in your corner who's going to go out there and help share your story with the world. Now, when I was active in Hollywood, and we're talking about 20 years ago, I don't recall it being as prevalent as I noticed today with either agents or publicists. Can you guys give me a sense of sort of the development of this over time? And also for both of you, how you got involved? Well, it's been really interesting on the PR side of things because when I did first start working, with people um, behind the camera because my experience before then was in different industries. So when I started with that and around 2014, 2015, it was really interesting because as I would start my outreach, a lot of people didn't understand why they would need a publicist. And it's more why well, work behind the camera. I don't want to be in front of it in any way, shape or form. Um, so it was really kind of explaining to people the benefit of it and that it's not just actors who need to have a publicist, that it's equally as important for these artisans and filmmakers to get to share their story too, um, because it's not necessarily just all about press, but you never know if someone who's hiring may see you know, all the stories coming out about someone and be like, oh, I didn't know about them. And it could hopefully lead to something career-wise too that could be helpful maybe to an agent. Um, and that's, you know, part of our collaboration process. Yeah, and I think the um, the representation of people behind the camera has grown over the, over the years, just organically, you know, because of the success, to be honest with you, of, of people that had us running around and uh, seeking out opportunities for them, introducing them to the best filmmakers they could and presenting opportunities. That coupled with, you know, all the work we do in terms of helping them out with making their deals, obviously, helping them through some of the political minefields that they're facing. Those are all things we do and create a little bit more success for that person. And so others see it and they want to have a a part of that as well. So it's just grown organically, I think, over the years. And as I said, it's, it's not just those four department heads anymore. There's a lot of other categories of people that have agents and publicists. How long have you two known each other? When did we meet? We met in 2015, 16? Yes, one of those years. (laughs) (laughs) Seems like so much longer than I guess it actually has been because we, yeah, work together quite often. 
Marilyn, I thought you were going to tell our story. Well, <laughs> it was a funny one because it was um, still a time where as publicists, we were trying to get clients and other crafts outside of just composers. And so I had been reaching out, I'm sure to Craig directly at some point and uh, other agents, but when I wasn't getting responses, I then would go out directly to his clients and try and do my own outreach. And I got a phone call one day from a girl and she goes, oh, I have Craig Mizrahi on the line for you. And I just, I think I just, my heart dropped and I was like, oh no. <laughs> and he, <laughs> and he answers the phone and he goes, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> In the nicest possible way. <laughs> In the nicest possible way. And then from there, yeah, we built a great friendship and obviously working relationship. So I guess that was the best, worst call I've got. <laughs> <laughs> All history but, from there. But yeah, it's funny. And we talked about it a lot over the years. Because I think you said at one point, Craig, you didn't remember that call happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what we had for lunch. <laughs> but yeah, we, we worked together really well. I think, I think you know, it's funny, you know, the publicity obviously is, is a newer thing than agenting in our world, of course. And so when it first began uh, back then, there was a lot of, um, you know, it wasn't uh, something that a lot of us agents were comfortable with because when it comes to our job for people behind the camera, as opposed to actors who will have their own attorney, publicist, manager, and agent, people behind the camera didn't have that. So the agent took on all four of those jobs. And then publicists came along, which is one of those. So when they first came on the scene, we were a little bit like, oh, um, well, you know, we do that. We try to get them articles and all of these extra fun things that, that these people want. But what we discovered early on with thanks to people like Marilyn was that publicity is a full-time job. It's not just something you can do as an add-on as an agent. And so it became very, very clear very quickly that it was an important thing that, that these folks had separately from agenting. So um, I took that to heart at the very beginning. A lot of other agents are also, you know, encouraging and excited about introducing their clients to publicists to help the cause of getting people out there, some of the, you know, buyers and folks that are interested hearing more about what their clients do. Well, Marilyn, pick it up from there. Give me a sense of what you do as a publicist for Below the Line Talent. So I really start by doing my own research and looking into film and television and saying, oh, okay, this project, I think the costume design really stands out or the production design or cinematography. And I like to identify those projects and reach out to those people or reach out to people like Craig and say, hey, I saw this as your client. Could you make an introduction for me? And I talk to the client to see what is special about the project to them, if anything. Sometimes people will say, mm, I'm not really interested in promoting this project, but I like to get to know these artists and learn you know, what their process was and have really in-depth conversations about it. What was your style? What kind of fabric did you use? Or just things to get the ins and outs of what they did. So I get to know them better. Um, where do you want to go in your career? And so I can kind of put messaging together. And that's when I start the media outreach. So I have a really detailed description of what they've done. And hopefully when I'm speaking with journalists, I'm kind of providing talking points in advance to just better help the message of what my client wants to talk about. And Craig, on your side, is representing someone who's below the line very different than representing an actor or director or some of these other folks that were more familiar with the role? Yeah. I mean, I, I believe, you know, on the day to day side of things, it's a little bit different because when you're representing actors, that's one craft you're representing. Uh, when you're representing people behind the camera, you're representing a whole bunch of different crafts. So you've got different kinds of personalities that you're representing and they start at different times. Some of them have different, you know, deals altogether. Some of them have different unions altogether. A line producer's union is the DGA, a cinematographer's union is IOTC. So you have to understand, have a true understanding of these of the differences within their their individual union uh, contracts. So yeah, it's it's different in that sense. And I would say 
personality wise, I've always been drawn towards people behind the camera. I've always had a great admiration for what these people do. They're not in the spotlight. It's something that drew me to this job at the very beginning was the fact that they're not movie stars. And it's a little bit more of a challenge to actually fight for these people because they're not top of mind for the studio head. It's, it's been a challenge for me that I've always uh, taken on and really enjoyed fighting for those people that aren't in the spotlight all the time. I agree with that um, because they are so out of the spotlight. First of all, I realize they're just wildly creative people, but it's so rewarding when you see someone who has put blood, sweat, and tears into a production, getting the chance to actually come out and speak about it. And I think it's great for them. They're so happy and humble, but it's really just the most rewarding part, I think, of what we do on uh, publicist and agent side, just to see them, their careers grow and them get more recognition for the huge part that they play. Craig, earlier you spoke about how agents were originally somewhat reluctant to bring publicists into this sphere, but more and more accepting it now. What does that collaboration look like between agent and publicist? As Marilyn was saying earlier, you know, it's the research. So she is incredibly skilled at understanding what, for instance, a production designer and a costume designer does, right? So I know that. So I know that when I have a really high end costume designer or production designer, and they have something really spectacular that might be coming out, Marilyn's the first person I'm gonna call and I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna talk about what sets that person apart so that I can then have an easier time pitching that person for their next job. Because I know what set that person apart to give you an example, we were currently collaborating on a client named Grosha Phillips, who is an incredibly talented costume designer who did The Woman King. But so Marilyn and I communicate. We communicate about that, about what set it apart, right? And so that when I go forward and I'm pitching her on something else, I have a little bit of an extra story to tell. So I think that's one thing that we do together. And then... If Marilyn, of course, there's if if Marilyn gets something really great uh, for a client, then I'm able to share that information again with potential buyers. And it's something like if I'm pitching a client and I say, hey, by the way, check out this article that has been written about them. That's helping my cause right there. So th there's a lot of that collaboration that happens, too. I think that's one of the really great things of working together and at least on the publicity side, since we were pretty new um, several years ago, a lot of what we did was building relationships with agents and Craig has, you know, become a, a great friend too. Um, but it was kind of talking to the agents and convincing them that we actually really could help and that we just wanted to be a part of the team. Um, we weren't trying to take over anything, just they were for additional support. I think it's great when we talk about clients where he says, you know, I have this client with a project coming out. What do you think? And it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I think that would be a great project to promote. So we're able to just bounce ideas off each other. Um, and I think that's made a really, really good partnership for us. Something that I have a, a really um, a lot of respect uh, for Marilyn is I will come to her and say, hey, my client would like some publicity for this specific project. And she'll give me the straight skinny. She'll say to me, here's the deal. You know, this is the project. This is what it means in the publicity world. And I think it may not be. It's not always, yes, yes, let's go. Let's get publicity. She's really careful about making sure that if she's going to take on a client, that she can be successful for that client. That's a thing. And I think that's what sets her apart from some of the other publicists. And I, you know, that's why I keep going back to her and keep working with her because she'll tell me the truth. And there have been a number of clients that have called me and said, I'm interested in publicity and, and I'll call her. And she'll go, it may not be the best idea right now. And she'll explain why. And then I'll go back to the client and explain. And they appreciate that honesty. Well, speaking of the clients and for our below the line listeners who are maybe considering representation, talk to me about what they should be thinking about. In other words, what sort of decisions are in front of them? What's the difference between crafts as far as making the decision to hire either or both of you? Well, I think it's really having the right project because I have had people come to me before who want to do publicity, but 
I want to be real with them. Like if it's a project that I know it's not going to get a lot of pickup or if it happens to be a small project that's coming out during Oscar season where that's where all the attention is. I want to be able to tell someone this isn't good timing. Um, this may not be the right project and just be real with people because I never want, I look at it as I would never want a client to go to a coworker and be like, she didn't do a good job, even though we always try our best. So I think it's the right time for people to get representation where the project is either big enough, not to say you shouldn't get representation if you have something on the smaller side, but coming with a project you're really passionate about, there's a good angle to work with, even if it's smaller on, if it's going to a festival, that can always be helpful to reach out to the press list um, at festivals. But if we can find a way to make the project special enough and have good timing, then I think that's time to bring someone on. Because I've also had people reach out after their project has come out. Um, and sometimes that works if it's big enough. But I always recommend people start a month or two in advance. So on the publicist side, we have enough time to get our messaging together to be able to do the very best job that we can. So I think a lot of it comes down to timing and project. You know, Skid, the, uh, it brings up the age old question of, you know, when do I get an agent? A lot of people ask me that question. I think the answer really is, yeah, ideally you won't, you won't have to go find an agent because they should find you. Part of our job as agents is to be out there looking at what's, what people are doing, uh, distinguishing somebody's work that might be exceptional, and then going out and finding them, reaching out and asking if they've ever had an agent before and if it's something they might be interested in. I think you know, as Marilyn said, it's about having a project that will make a splash, enough of a splash for us to have that ammunition to be able to, to sell, you know, and to, and to start that journey, start your journey off um, the right way. So I think, you know, that's a really big part of it is, do you have that project that's really um, meaningful enough for potential buyers who don't know you to might maybe be interested? And then, you know, if the answer is yes, then it's okay to reach out. It's okay. If you're not getting calls from agents, that's all right. It's always okay to reach out, send a nice email to a couple of agents, introduce yourself. But what I do recommend is if you're going to do that, know your audience. So first, research them. Find out who their roster is currently. Do what you can to get to know who that person is that you're emailing. And then if you have that kind of a connection, like, hey, I know this DP that uh, Craig represents, mention that in the email. I have great respect for this person that you represent. Maybe sometime you'd like to grab coffee and, and check out my reel and, you know, kind of be real. Most of the time you're going to get a response and the response might be not now, but a lot of us agents are really intrigued and excited about, you know, meeting new people. And it does sound like the relationship with an agent is going to be long-term, but Marilyn, it sounds like a lot of your stuff is project specific, or do you also have long-term relationships that are eventually cultivated out of these projects? I try and build all the long-term relationships I can with my clients. It's just that I work with them on a project basis so that it's a few months around the project they have coming out since that's really what's going to be timely. They don't necessarily need someone 12 months out of the year. So I've worked with some clients for five plus years. And once we have a great project and then they have something else coming out, then we start over again. But I, you know, I really love and admire the clients that I have. Um, and I'm always excited to meet new people and new clients can come out of either agent referrals like Craig or clients will refer their colleagues to me or sometimes it's me doing my own outreach. So clients can come in from several different ways. But yeah, I find it constantly interesting to to learn more about their crafts and, and what they do. And how about podcasters? Now, are they moving into the getting representation as well these days? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's funny. Guys, this has been great advice uh, for folks and really an interesting look uh, behind the scenes. Thanks so much for being here. On that note, we're going to call it a wrap. Really nice talking to you both. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, kid. Now, if people want to learn more about either of your crafts, where online should they go? Craig, why don't you go first? We have a website that uh, you can certainly hit at uh, innovative-production.com. In Maryland? And our website is storylinepublicrelations.com. 
Listeners, I think you know what my website is. That's below the line, one word, dot biz. And you can always go there to get past episodes and links to all of our social media. So check it out. My closing credits, thanks to Curtis Five for our music, John Juan for our logo, and to all of our listeners, I appreciate you. Please rate us wherever you get your podcasts and tell your friends. Thanks again from Below the Line.